Tarzan of the Apes, brought to you from out the pages of Edgar Rice Burroughs' astounding book. Come now, Professor. There's still a chance they'll see our signal. Oh, yes, yes, I, I know. Perhaps they... Uh, uh, look, look, Clayton. They see us. They see us. Look, look. They're swinging out of boat. I told Professor, you're right. They've seen us. See, they're putting a small boat over the side. Clayton, can you tell what nationality the cruiser or, or gunboat is? I can't be positive, but from her color, she's either British or French. Uh, it must be French. Don't you recall, Clayton? A few days before the sailors mutinied, we, we saw a French cruiser. You're right, Professor. We did sight a French cruiser. And if we'd only known what was in store for us... Yes, yes, how different. Oh, my daughter, my, my lovely little Jane... If, if only... Now, now, Professor, bear okay. up. In a few minutes, a very few minutes, we will all be searching. I'm convinced in my own mind that Jane is alive. Yes, yes, in fact, I'm convinced you were both mistaken about her captor. And that it was that jungle fellow who carried her off into the tree. But Clayton, I saw the ape. You were distraught. You were hardly conscious of what was taking place. No, I'm uh, sure that that... Clayton, was... why should the jungle man rescue us, Philander and me, save you and kill the lion that attacked Jane only to end up by harming her. Possibly from his standpoint, he has no intention of harming her. All this is supposition, mere conjecture. Meanwhile, the boat swung out and we have quite a long way to go to get to the beach. Uh, right you are, Philander. Why? Why, they're close enough to see now. They are French, I'm sure of it. Come, Professor. Philander, the sooner we get to the beach, the better. Back in the jungle, Jane Porter and Tarzan finished their breakfast. To Jane, the jungle has changed overnight. No longer is it a place of inexpressible dread. No longer does her blood run cold at the rasping cough of the panther, the deep-throated growl of new mother lion, or the weird laugh of Dango the hyena. True, Jane is not altogether comfortable, but with white skin, as she calls Tarzan, close at hand, dangers seem less dangerous, and fear gives way to interest. The girl is puzzled. She does not know that white skin is Tarzan, and she wonders about Tarzan. Over and over, her brain tells her that she must get back to the hut, but her heart, her heart whispers that were it not for her father, she wouldn't care about it. She turns and looks at Tarzan stretched beside her on the moss-covered roots of the tree. The ape man's finely developed muscles ripple under the bronze, satiny skin of his every movement. Mentally, she compares him with the men of her acquaintance. Presently, she leans forward. White skin. Tarzan looks up. Jane? Jane. She looks at him for a moment, then rising to her feet, she points off into the jungle in the direction she believes the hut to be. White skin, we must go. Tarzan rises and looks in the direction indicated by her pointing finger. He looks at Jane. Go? 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 Yes. Jane, Go. Jane, go. White skin, go. She takes a few steps toward, as she believes, the hut. Jane, go. White skin, go. Tarzan holds her back. He shakes his head. This is beyond him. In that direction lies Munga's village, and certainly this white she knows nothing of these black men that eat their kin, a thing the great apes do not tolerate. Jane stops. Again, she points. Jane, go. White skin, go. Vigorously, she nods her head while repeating the two words. Tarzan slowly shakes his head. How to tell Jane that in that direction lived the cannibal Gomangani? He takes her hand in his, lifts it to his mouth, and pretends to bite her arm in an effort to tell Jane that the savages are cannibals. Hungry. Eat. Jane. He points to the village, the direction in which she had started to go, and shakes his head. Munga. Hungry. Eat. Jane. Cannibal. Tarzan does not understand the word, but the horror in Jane's voice convinces him that she knows what he means. He points again in the direction of Munger's village and slowly, emphatically shakes his head. Down on the beach, below the headland with its flaming beacon, Clayton, Philander, and Porter watch with mixed emotions the small boat pulling for the shore. Yes, Professor, they are French. 
That's a French naval officer getting out of the boat now. Uh, the mere sight of him gives me renewed hope. I'm sure our troubles are over now. Here he comes. Monsieur Clayton, I presume. Yes, Lieutenant. And you? Lieutenant Darnot of the French Navy. Thank heaven you come. And I hope in time. In time. What do you mean? Uh, sir, permit me to present you to Professor Porter. Charming, monsieur. And uh, this is Mr. Philander. It's pleasure, monsieur. Oh, Lieutenant, if you will but help us. May we of a certainty, but please explain. Miss Porter, the professor's daughter, was carried off yesterday by an ape. Mon Dieu, an ape? It is impossible. Ça, c'est incroyable. Oh, it is too horrible to contemplate. The brute did not kill her at once. We heard her scream several times. Therefore, we feel that it may not yet be too late. Ah, Monsieur Darnell, you, you will, you will help me to find, to search for my child. Oui, oui, Monsieur, but certainly. Monsieur le Capitaine Dufresne will be ashore presently, and ah, here is le Capitaine now. Mon Capitaine, Monsieur Clayton. Monsieur. Monsieur Philander. Monsieur. Et le Professeur Potter. Monsieur, it is a pleasure to know that we have arrived in time to be of assistance. Mon Capitaine, pardon, but we have not arrived in time. The gentleman has just informed me that the daughter of le Professeur Potter has been carried off into the jungle by an ape. An ape? Monsieur, c'est terrible. C'est impossible. Allons, mes enfants. You have heard that over a monsieur, the professor has been taken into the jungle by an ape who will volunteer. Allow me, Dofo. Every man is willing to so kind. Uh, explain quickly. Mr. Philander saw the thing. Oh, Miss Porter, the profane fruit. Not this far that the ape did. The gentleman heard her scream. Uh, an hour or longer. I must kill at once. Uh, Monsieur B. Allah. Uh, yes, yes, that's it. We start. Oh, man, I uh, must know that you should ask. We shall start at command. You will, uh... Mais enfants, les premiers mars. Presenter, we'd better go to the hut first. The hut. It is far from the place to... Bien. Too much time, Dono. Uh, Monsieur, a rather... St- a man. I think I think he goes through the trees more quickly than a monkey. Mm-hmm. Sounds like it, I know, but true. Very bronzed, and we, Professor Paul, saw him kill a lion single-handed, and not an ape. Abducted. No Yes, a fan more powerful than one has ever seen before. But I couldn't help overhearing.